my name is David Montesano, and we're going to be discussing improving your transfer admission outlook, getting off the wait list today. So you get a sense of, you know, you know, again, 40% of the class taken up by athletes, minorities, and legacies. So, you know, it's just not as clear cut as you might think. Now, here are some of the, I wanted to give you some hope. So, you know, because I know we talked a lot about how, you know, transfer rates are, um, you know, if, every, if everyone's staying there, if they have high, um, you know, freshman retention um, that, and, and, and people graduate on time, that there really isn't, and they don't drop later off, drop, you know, leave later, that most, um, a lot of those places don't have any spaces, you know, places like Stanford, I mean, you know, the, you know, crazy acceptance, you know, the, it's lower than 2% kind of thing. And Harvard, I think for a while, even stopped the transfer process altogether because they just didn't have any spaces. So, I mean, those are extreme examples, but I wanted to show you some schools that have high, you know, high acceptance rates for transfers because there are a lot out there. Um, you know, and these are some of the schools I think that are kind of, you know, some compelling, interesting places um, from liberal arts colleges like Washington and Jefferson to big, um, kind of comprehensive universities like Arizona State, to small liberal arts colleges, again, like Calvin, which is actually a good, liberal arts, pretty good liberal arts college um, in Michigan, to my, you know, massive schools like Ohio State, um, Colorado State, po these are polytechnics and research universities. University of Denver is kind of a hybrid size school. Washington State's a polytechnic. Um, you know, there's a lot of really, and you know, a lot of interesting schools here to look at. So some, and UC Riverside has um, one of the highest acceptance rates. So we're just talking about the UCs if, um, for a couple of people there. And also University of Oregon, which is also on the West Coast. So that might be of interest. Um, let me take another question here. This person says, I know schools have their specific requirements for admission transfer. What are the general requirements for a four-year to four-year transfer? In your opinion, would a school give different priority to a student trying to return to their home state school system from out of state? Thank you. Oh, that's a great question. Okay, so let me break this down. So schools have specific requirements. She knows that. Um, what are the general requirements for four-year to four-year transfer? Well, um, I mean, okay, so if you're talking about state schools, what are the general requirements? I mean, again, it's going to you know, depend on the state, and, and we've got a number of state schools here, uh, so I wouldn't be able to, to sort of be specific enough about that for you, possibly. But in general, what you need, I mean, just, okay, so think about it this way. It's great if you have your high school transcript, uh, and you have decent grades there, or, you know, there's at least an upward trajectory, right? Um, and in college, I mean, a, a rule of thumb for transferring is that you kind of want to have, I mean, this is, you know, kind of, optimal is a 3.0, okay, or above to transfer. It really helps. Um, if you have a lower than that, there are, you know, schools that will possibly accept you, but it makes it a bit tougher. And the higher your GPA, the more, you know, more easily you can transfer from school to school, four-year to four-year school. So I hope that helps you. It's really driven by your college GPA, mostly, okay. And, um, especially if you'll have about a year and a half to two years, you know, when you're applying or so uh, of, of college credits and grades. Um, it's also could be driven by your high school, you know, grades in those last couple years as well, just to let you know. But the good news is that data doesn't have to hit their books. So they're not going to get too worried about that as long as your college grades are high. And um, I would just say it's, you know, if you have a 2.5 or better, that's great. If you have a 3.0, it gets better for you. And if you have a 3.5, you're pretty golden as far as transferring, in my opinion. Okay? So, you know, 3.3, 3.2, still, still workable. 3.0 is still workable. So it gets harder after that. Okay. Um, and your last question, uh, in your opinion, would a school give different priority to a student trying to return to their home state school system from out of state? Yeah, well, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, you know, if you're... Um, coming back home to your home state institution, I think you have a pretty good, you know, argument um, because your family's been paying taxes and, and the majority of the spots at that state institution are set aside for, for citizens of that state, right? People who are taxpayers of that state. So as a taxpayer of that state, you know, by the transitory, pro you know, the property of being your, you know, a, a son or daughter of your parents, um, I, you know, who, who reside in that state, I would say that, yeah, your, your chances are pretty good 
that they will take a very serious look at your application and put you ahead of other people, certainly from other states, okay? Um, hope that helps. Yeah, because most of the spots, you know, I'd say usually it's over 60, in many cases over 70, in many cases, you know, even higher. It can, it can be higher. Um, you know, majority spots reserved for in-state residents, okay? And you don't give up your residency by going to another state to study. Uh, unless you change your residency by working a year before doing that or something like that, whatever that state's requirement is. So just to let you know, you didn't lose your state residency going to, going to another state. Okay. So these high transfer rates, I hope they give you a little bit of hope because there are some extremely low transfer rates out there. You know, places that just have, you know, 2% acceptance rates. I mean, I, m among the more difficult to get into schools, 2%, 20%, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so it's nice to see some schools that actually have, you know, above 50% in terms of transfer acceptance rates. They do exist, okay? Okay, so it looks like it. Any other questions? I'll give, I'll give somebody one more chance here if there are any others, um, kind of last minute ones. It doesn't look like You've been a great audience, and I want to say thank you so much for your time, and um, best of luck to you in transfer. I know you can, you can get off that wait list, so just focus on some of the principles we talked about today, and you'll be very successful. Take care. Thanks.